God bless you, church. Thank you for joining me again with this week's study. I hope you've had a, a blessed week. As we continue with studying on the attributes of God, tonight we'll be looking at the grace of God. Um, so if you could open up your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 2, and we'll be looking at uh, verses 8 to 9. So I'll give you a quick minute to get there. Um, short passage. Um, so once we read the passage... Um, if you could just also just bow your heads and we'll just pray. Again, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. And the word of God says this, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. If you could bow your heads with me. Lord, we just give thanks again, just for this time that we're able just to open up your word, Lord, uh, for the te technology that we have, they're able to utilize um, just to advance your gospel, Lord. We just pray um, that tonight that you open up our hearts, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will um, intervene, Lord, and help us understand uh, how great you are and looking at the grace of God. We just give thanks for tonight, Lord, and for those that are participating. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so I've broken it up um, just so it's easier to go through some three key points. Um, so for those taking notes, I do encourage for those for those of jo you joining uh, to take notes. It's something that you can recall later on and also look back on. Uh, so for the first subheading, we'll look at a perfection of the divine character. So grace. Firstly, what what is grace? Grace is the sovereign and saving favor of God exercised upon those who have no merit in it and which no compensation is demanded from them. So grace is the favor of God shown to those who are undeserving of it. It is completely unobtainable through works and is unsought and it is unattracted by anything or from upon who it is given to. Grace cannot be bought, earned, or one by the created. If we were able to, it would not be considered grace at all. When something is said to be of grace, we mean that the recipient has no claim upon it and that it was not due to be given to them. It is received as pure charity and is unasked and undesired. The Apostle Paul depicts what grace is, is in, in Romans chapter 11, verse 6, and distinguishes the opposition to grace. I'll give you a quick minute to get there, and I've got it here for those that don't have it. So uh, Romans chapter 11, verse 6, but if it is gr by grace, it is no longer on the basis of works. Otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. In Paul's writings, we can see that grace stands in direct opposition to works and worthiness. This is clear from the passage that we've just read. It says, as I reiterate, grace cannot be received by works at all. And why is this? Let us reread the main passage that we started tonight's study with. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. There are three principal characteristics of divine grace. Firstly, it is eternal. Grace was planned before it was applied, and grace was purposed before it was imparted to us. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9 says, Who saved us and called us to a holy calling? not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. Secondly, grace is free. No one is able to purchase it. Romans chapter 3 verse 24 says, And we are justified by, grace, by his grace as a gift, through the redemption that is in Jesus, that is in Christ Jesus. And thirdly, grace is sovereign because God exercises it towards and gives to whom he pleases. Romans chapter 5 verse 21 says, So that as sin reigned in death, grace must also reign through righteousness 
leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. If grace reigns, then it is on the throne, and the occupant of the throne is sovereign. This is where we get the term, the throne of grace. And this is also mentioned in the Bible, and we can find that in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. And that passage says, Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. As we get to the next subheading, uh, God's sovereign selection. I want us I want us to look at uh, Exodus chapter 33 verse 19 and I'll read that passage um, to you as well and he said I will make all my goodness pass before you and you and will proclaim before you my name the Lord and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy so what does God declare in this passage? We see that God will be gracious to whom he will be gracious to. If God were to show grace to all of Adam's descendants, all men would conclude that he, that he was righteously compelled to take them into heaven as a compensation for allowing the human race to fall into sin. But brothers, God is under no obligation to any of his creation, even more so to those who rebel against him. The distinguishing grace of God is seen in saving those whom he has sovereignly singled out to be his chosen. But what do we mean by distinguishing grace? What we mean is that grace discriminates or chooses some and passes by others. It was by distinguishing grace that selected Abraham from the midst of his idolatrous neighbours and made him a friend of God. It was also distinguishing grace that saved the publicans and the sinners, but said to the Pharisees, let them and leave them be. And that is found in Matthew chapter 15, verse 14. The glory of God's free and sovereign grace shines no brighter than the unworthiness and unlikeliness of its objects. Now, the grace of God is manifested in and by and through the Lord Jesus Christ. It isn't to say that grace was not exercised in the Old Testament, as there were countless examples of this, but grace and truth were fully revealed and perfectly exemplified when Jesus came to this earth and died for his people upon the cross. Now, the grace of God is proclaimed in the gospel, which is to the self-righteous Jew, is seen as a stumbling block and to the philosophical Greek foolishness. And why is this? Because there is nothing in it that gratifies the pride of man. Nothing man can do can obtain grace. The gospel announces that unless we are saved by grace, we cannot be saved at all. The state of every man is desperate, irremediable, irremediable and hopeless. The gospel also addresses men as guilty, condemned, and perishing criminals. It declares that the most religious person with all their religiosity and their performances is no better off than the profane, the most profane enemy. The gospel cont contemplates every descendant of Adam as fallen, polluted, hell-deserving, and helpless. The grace which the gospel publishes is man's only hope. And we look at the gospel and we see that the God, the Father, is the fountain of grace. He's the source of, of grace. God, the Son, is the only channel of grace. It is through him that we are saved. The gospel is the publisher of grace. This is where we see the stories and accounts of God's grace being poured out to his people. And the Holy Spirit is a communicator of grace. He is the one who applies the gospel in saving power to the soul, quickening the elect while spiritually dead, conquering our rebellious nature and melting our hard hearts. The Holy Spirit also opens our blind eyes and cleanses us from our sins. And I quickly want to end on a powerful quote, which is read by a G.S. Bishop. And it goes as, Grace is a provision for men who are so fallen 
that they cannot lift the acts of justice, so corrupt that they cannot change their own natures, so averse to God that they cannot turn to him, so blind that they cannot see him, and so deaf that they cannot hear him, and so dead that he himself must open up their graves and lift them into resurrection. And what a blessing that is, guys, that we that we see the grace of God through the accounts in the Bible. You know, we we see Jesus dying on the cross for for our sins and something that we cannot ever pay for. And it is by the power and the blood of Jesus that we are saved and we um, have that channel of grace through Jesus. And that's why it's so important that we spend time in the Gospels, that we look at um, grace. We, we see we're in a world that needs grace right now. If anything, it's the most important thing, the saving of souls. Um, so tonight I just want to wrap up. So if you could bow your heads with me. Lord, we just give thanks on just this short reflection of what is grace, Lord. Such a profound um, study on something that we are learning day in and day out, Lord. And I pray and give thanks that we were able to to open up your word and study and learn that, you know, grace, there's nothing that we can do to obtain grace, but it is only through Jesus Christ that we are able to receive it, Lord. We are so thankful, Lord, for your word and for this time, Lord. And we just pray for the church, Lord, as we come back um, soon, coming back to, to coming together and uniting and being in communion, Lord. We just pray for these things to come, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, church.